Oh, Richard will be back on in a second. Uh, so, Scott Brun, thank you very much for trying to intimidate me into drinking loads of shakes and eating. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Uh, I'm doing my best, Scott, but thank you. Uh, all right, Richard, I press record. You all right, mate? Oh, he's probably just... Richard's not a tech guy. He's... Uh... Have a look. We're on. Maybe sus he'll suss it in a minute. Anyway, welcome to part two. Uh, Richard will be joining us shortly. How are you up, mate? Uh, do you think that Conor Ben is taking it for money and if he gets beat, he knows that he's got the cushion that his ranking's protected. He's ranked number four with WBA. Uh, yeah, I do. I do think that. I think that, like I was saying uh, last week to you, I think that uh, he, he, they've taken the view that he got that date. I do believe Eddie Earn on this one, to be honest. They got a date. They're going to go ahead with a fight. If if Eubank were ready and accepted their conditions, they'd go ahead with the fight. The reason he's taking fight is it's not going to affect his W. His, sorry, his uh, welterweight ranking. It's not going to alter his welterweight career. And I do think that they think we can beat him for lots of different reasons. Yeah. I, I I think it's um, a very small chance of him winning. Would I like to see him win? I would, yeah. I think because that had helped define whether he, all this hype was justified in beating a, a decent uh, super middleweight on the way up. I'm not saying you makes a roadman killer, but he's not bad. He, he's a good fighter. Um, he's had a lot, lot of dec half decent wins. Um, so I woke at his box track earlier this morning and when I look back at his career, most I think from third fight, he thought people were winning records. You know, fighting gatekeepers like Spike Sullivan after six, seven, eight fights. Um, so I, he's not a bad fighter. So if Ben did pull off a win like at that weight, I think it'd uh, it'd it'd say it'd be a statement. But I, I can't see happening. Yeah, I can't. But I can see a technical draw or a draw, and let's play it against Sam. I can see that kind of thing. Leopards don't change the sports. Promoters run boxing. They want to. They're going to want to do it again. They'll have a rematch. Well, what what script could it possibly be for a rematch? Well, it's going to have to be a Ward Gatti or a bit of a good start, and somebody gets a bad cut and it gets stopped or something. I don't know. I don't see it going twelve. Do you? No, but if it were if it were a Ward Gatti. Yeah, oh, I, mean, I, watched, I can't remember the last time I watched Ward Gatti, but it weren't that long ago. You know, you, if that that would be a justification enough for me, if you were that sort of war, I'd, you know, I'd want to watch it again. Yeah, um, I agree, mate. I agree. Uh, Conor Ben's not that tall, is he? He's only a, he's only that he's a, he's a he's a he's really a small welterweight, isn't he? But he has to be given some credit for taking this, doesn't he? Yeah, he's five eight, Russ. Five eight, same height as me, isn't it? Yeah, I, I only know that because I'm looking at both the box wrecks. So, you know, I'm not. I, I, Kent yeah. will just know everybody's eye on everyone. I, I just happen to be looking at the box wrecks this morning, so I'm not. <laughs> I've not got that that level of knowledge. We're not. We're not. We're not box wreck men like Kent. Kent goes to bed and texts. Him. Yeah. When I go to bed at night, I take this. But my mate Paul from Kent got me. Good book. I, I thought you were going to pull out a fiesta there. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, or what's that other one I used to get? Escort. Escort. I know uh, I read that, but uh, what happens though if somebody gets injured and it's Conor Ben? Who's got? Are they all going to run for the hills? Yeah, we'll all look at ourselves and say, you know, we're, we're bad mistakes to put somebody in with, with like a stone weight difference in weight, boxing weights, and probably two stone walking about weights. Because yeah. I don't think uh, this is where the danger lies with this sort of matchup. I don't think um, Ben ever walks around out of shape. He might be half a stone above fighting weight. I know he likes it, he looks forward to his grub when he's not in camp, but even when he's not in camp, and eating and going on holiday to Dubai and everywhere. He, he's, he's posting photos with his shirt off. He still has a six pack. You know, he, he doesn't look much different. I don't think he'll, he'll ever put much weight on. Sure, uh, no. Although that's a bold old, statement. 25 yeah. carrying fat. Yeah. Um, where you bank, I think he could be up to 13 stone when he's walking about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, 
So that, that's going to be the danger. That's why I said about the rehydration clause. If they can level it up, if they can get to a situation where I say it's like uh, an, Ben challenging him to a 100-metre race after he's just completed a marathon, well, that's levelling it up, isn't it? Yeah. But if but if he if he's going to come in quite fresh and quite strong and you know in good good shape, it could be a long hard night for Conor Ben. Yeah, yeah, it could, mate. It could. Okay. Uh, payments. I've heard they're on five mil each. I think that's a lot of money for what they've achieved. What they've well, I think boxers should get paid what they're worth, and if they're fill, they're the ones that fill in this arena out, and we'll get the pay for view, pay per view for uh, numbers. I have read somewhere last night that uh, or early this morning that Hearn has already said that he's never seen as much interest generated for a UK fight as this one. Well, so they're probably kicking themselves. Yeah, 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 I get that, I get that, but uh, let's see how fast these uh, tickets go because. I didn't expect the Khan Brook fight to sell out in ten minutes, did you? No, I didn't know. So so I, I I think they're probably kicking themselves and I bet you any money that it sells in a similar amount of time. And and I bet you any money they'll be saying, Well, we could have sold this fight three and four times over. But anyway, your question was five million each. If that's generating a revenue of twenty million and they're only sharing half of that pot, I think it's well deserved, mate. Yeah. The, the the fathers are doing like a tour, aren't they? Somewhere they're going to do a tour. Apparently, I've been told. Um, it's going to be good for them because they're not uh, as rich as the sons now, are they? <laughs> so they've had their time in the sun, haven't they? Uh, it's a lot of million, it five million. Connor Bend. I mean, what has he achieved to be getting figures like that? He's not won a belt, has he? No, he's not achieved anything. He's he's a prospect. Um... Oh, he's a contender. Let's say he's a contender. He's a contender. Contender now, isn't he? But, but, but you know, look at Logan Paul. What's he? What's he? He's got more money than everybody put together. And what's he done in boxing? Oh, we've it, You yeah. know, they they they've got a, if they've got a business model and it, it works for them, you can't blame them for maxing out on it. You know, what I mean, you just can't you can't blame them for that. I'd be do, I'd be doing exactly the same thing if I wasn't financially secure, and I were in their situation. I'd be saying, how do I get into a situation where I'm financially secure? And people do a lot worse and put themselves at a lot more risk, whether it's being stressed at work or working 100 hours a week, just to try and get themselves a little bit of financial security. So it's the toughest sport in the world, boxing, but uh, to go through a few rounds and get a few punches when, you, when you're both skilled fighters, I think that, uh, you know, I can understand it. Yeah, I agree. Uh do you fear, Richard, for boxing moving forward with these? Because it, it seems to be all we're wanting to do now is play around with weights and gimmicks and stuff like that. And do you feel like boxing's losing a bit of its coolness of what it actually is? Uh, yeah, I think that we're, ne we're never going to get those golden days back. We we're not. The, the world's moved on. And, you know, we had a period of, I think it probably ended in, in probably ended in the 90s, didn't it? You know, we've we've always had politics in boxing. We've always had people being avoided to a certain degree. People fighting people at the right time, getting the timing right, trying to level things up as much as they can. And that's that's always been the case, but to a lesser degree. But for that period of 90 years... It were pretty similar model, you know. You only got a few people controlling it. There were no social media. People had to fight each other to get to decent purses and uh, to make a living for themselves and a good life for themselves. That's all changed, hasn't it, from noughties onwards? Social media has become big. You've got people like, like I said, Logan Paul and celebrities boxing and YouTubers boxing, which is fine. If you know, like I said, they can make a pound, they can make a pound. But it, it's it's not for the hardcore, is it? No. You're not really hardcore. It's like um, I might get pelters for this, but it's like with women's boxing. I'm only interested in the in the ones the boxers that are really good and have got some skill. I'm not interested in the ones that that aren't. It doesn't do it for me. Like like any any boxing, you know, it doesn't do it for me if, if there's no level of skill there. Now, as that level of skill gets gets more and more 
there's more and more women become more skillful. I'll probably tune into more women's fights. Yeah. But, uh, you know, we want to see two people who have got a lot of skill. They're going against each other. They have a fight. The best man comes out winning and, and that's it. And we, 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 I've never been to a boxing match where I've fancied somebody. And if they've lost, I haven't applauded the winner. You know what I mean? Because it, it's not like that in boxing. It's not like football match, is it? Oh, For me, it isn't. You, you might have got a favourite. You might have. You might have even put some money on. Yeah, but we somebody got boxing, don't we? We just love it. So we're not. We're not going to. We're not going to uh, get those golden days back. Uh, so yeah, it is losing its way a little bit. It's got more competition. People with everything have got more competition. People have got a lot more choice in what they can spend the money on. Mm. So um, you know, it's it's going through a tough time. That's why we've got to have good fights that, that capture the, the interest of a wider audience. Because the UFC is taking over, mate. And, and you, you, you know I'm a big fan of the UFC as well. And UFC is taking over. Yeah, I see, I see where you're coming from. I see where you're coming from. Uh, the Gad. He's had his moment in the sun. He's took a bit of stick for a couple of weeks. People saying he's full of it. The Gad said, believe in the Gad. His sources are mustard. He's having a celebration fag on AFL. Uh, Gad, you got it right. Conor Ben, well done. I thought it was dead in water after all that chit-chat and that they were messing him about. But there's a few more twists and turns to come. And let me tell you this, I won't put it past you, Bank, pulling rug out from under there in a week before fight because they're not bothered about them, are they? Listen, mate, a broken clock's right twice a day, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, it... it He's got a look. He's a journalist who's been doing it for, a, for quite a few years. So if you haven't got some sources, yeah, uh, you know. But if you offset that against Tyson Fury debacle, you know, he, he, he fell for that white and sinker. Yeah. So it's it's his, you know it's it swings and roundabouts, isn't it? So so good luck. You can all make predictions, and like I say, if the fifty fifty prediction is off the time, you're going to be right. So yeah, I've said you this before. I ain't got any time for the guy. Any, any guy who thinks that Ebony Bridges has done as much for boxing as Mohamed Ali needs to, needs to go up to, um, what do we used to say in the old days? Rampton. Was he oh, Rampton? Rampton up towards Bill Gainsborough, isn't it? Up there. Yeah, then he, he needs to go up there and have himself checked out because that, you know, so I ain't got any time for that crap. We tried to send me the when I was 19. I went, get gone. I want to go to Broadmoor. <laughs> <laughs> You're not. We're going to keep you in block. Right. Uh, why has... Right, th this has come from two journalists, old schools. And I've said, well, I might, I might put it out, I might not. Uh, why are IFL TV the only media outlet on YouTube that have got full VIP access to every single matchroom show? Why is that? Are they the in-house PR team? Or what? I didn't know. I didn't know that was the case. Um, listen, I think if you, I think if you're a journalist or a, a news agency or, or something, you've got a legitimate gripe there, haven't you? Because it's not it's not a fair playing field. No. Um, but realistically speaking, you know, a company can do with do what it wants with who it wants. They they have got no obligations whatsoever unless there's some keep something contractual that says, you know, each press agency it gets equal airtime, equal exclusivity, which I'm sure there isn't. The company can do what they want. Is it right, in my opinion? No, but and and do the other outlets have a, a, a good reason to gripe and, and, and not be happy about that? That yeah they do. But at the end of the day, it's probably always happened relationships, backhanders, you know, say good things about me and give me plenty of publicity and I'll look after you. One hand washing the other. That's just how it is. Is it right? No, but it's not a surprise. Is it a surprise to you? Not really, no. And Coogan probably knows where the bodies are buried. That's the one. Uh, okay. Uh, MTK. Uh, Prevellum. Wasserman, what do you make of all that now? Wasserman putting all Pabellum fighters on. 
Channel 5? Uh, well, you know, the fight has had to go somewhere, so that something was going to surface. Yeah. Nobody's asking any questions about it. Oh. Everything's died down about it. Um, you know, I'm personally not bothered whether it's questions asked or they're not asked. No, I just want to see fights. I just want to see fights. So, um, football, Richard, would it have died down? No, of course it wouldn't. It no, it's be bail, it? they'd be arrested. The bail on one, the country would be up in arms, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would be. It, you know, it is. But um, boxing's never been in the same light as football. It, it, it never will be. You know, it's, you know, I'm not. I, I'm a. I'm a football fan. I, I like it. I'm not an hardcore football fan. You know, I do like. I like most sports, but. I love to see boxing up there in the same, in, in all in the same regard as, as sports like that. But it only appeals to a certain few people, and uh, that's how it's all, always going to be, mate. So that's why there's never any questions. Look at how many, if there are as many deaths or as many accidents in in football as has been in boxing over the years, or if there'd been as many people fall on hard times in football as they have in boxing over the years, would something be done about it? Of course, it would. Yeah, uh, Savannah, Clarissa. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, I am. Yeah, so this I can't remember if it was the last video. Or this video, yeah, when the good fights, I like I like to watch them, and I like to. It's a good fight. I think Savannah will. I think I said last. I think you'll either <clears throat> stop her late or knock her out late. Yeah, I think um, she'll go with a game plan that Pete gives her. She'll stick to it, and as a result of that, she'll get the win. I'd be. So I'm pretty confident. I might even have a bet on it, depending on what the odds are. I'm pretty confident that she'll win. I'd be a lot happier if she, Savannah, came across more confidently. She's not outgoing, is she? You know what I mean? She, she just gets on. And, and, and then I sometimes wonder whether, you know, whether she lacks a bit of confidence. She doesn't seem to lack confidence in the ring, but that's my only concern about it. Very quiet. Very quiet. Very quiet. Yeah. Lovely. She's doing really well. She's bought a new house and that. You know, new nice car and that. Good luck to her. She's put her time in, hasn't she? Yeah, she deserves everything she gets. Don't she, miss a session. she don't miss a session, you know. She's very regimented. I mean, you never seen not like it, mate. Like a machine. Honestly. If, everything, mate, this in life. You do the right things in life and you get the results. Exactly. The, the, the difficulty is doing the right things. That That is it. Yeah. Business, personal... Whatever it is, as long as you keep persevering and doing the right things, you'll get the results. As long as when you when you take shortcuts or you kid yourself, you know, I should I should know myself. You know, every time I want to lose a few stone, you know, there's no use losing a few stone. Then going out for a, you know a nice spaghetti bolognese and a couple of bottles of wine, it's not going to work, is it? No, it ain't, mate. What do you think to uh, Johnny Fisher? What do you think to <laughs> which bit? Let me just put this on. Because I saw Kent. Let me just put this on first. <laughs> oh, hang on a minute. I saw Kent. I saw Kent doing the helmets. Oh, weapons, sorry. Right, well, let me just put it on here. Hang on a minute. I've got some here. You don't like the Hang on a minute. Where is it now? I've got a little clip here. I think they might have seen it. Johnny, uh, what's he called? Fisher and his dad eating like pigs. Like pigs, weren't they? At a trough. Did you see it on the channel? On no, the... I saw him. I saw him handing out. I saw him handing out Chinese food to his opponent, and and the last thing his opponent needed were more Chinese food. You know, he didn't need it. He needed to lay off the Chinese food before he got it ring. Listen, I think Johnny Fish is a decent prospect with a good trainer. Um, I, I think he should just concentrate on that. I think that Derek Chisora started this. He probably done it all his career. Started handing the burgers out. The moment until it got filmed, it became something. So maybe it happens all the time. They go into each other's dressing rooms and they pat each other on back, I've give each other a kiss, and, and they have a beer afterwards. I've never. I don't know, mate. Well, there you go then. No. I mean, can there we, you go. Are we, what we're we going to have soon? Are we going to have Michelin starred chefs? Are we going to have Gordon Ramsay turning up? Are we going to have buffets? Is it going to be like Man U and Arsenal that time when they're throwing pizza at each other? What what was going to be going on here? Are we going to be having battles? People sliding on, skidding and breaking the legs on a, a greasy bit of Peking duck in dressing room at O2 or something? I don't know, mate. 
But it's all a bit gimmicky, and it's got Eddie Hearn written all over it, a bit like Ben Eubank. That's got Eddie Hearn written all over it with rehydration causes and catch weights and, 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 all, and all this. It's all a bit too gimmicky with me. Uh, messing about with a sport that doesn't need messing about with. Yeah, the, the Chinese things are a bit cringy. Uh, and for me, fighters just need to patty each other on, like, have a beer and uh, crack on, get ready for the next fight. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I agree with you, mate. I agree wholeheartedly with you. Uh, what do you think is going to happen with Wilder now? Do you think he comes back, uh, Richard? Yeah, I think I think he comes back, and I hope he does come back. You think he's, they'll be uh, fight him? Say again. You think you think they'll be queuing up to fight him? No, no. If you've got any sense. I don't think you any sense. Tyson doesn't need to fight him. He's, he's, in my opinion, he beat him three times. I know it doesn't say that on his record because the draw got the first fight. He won that clearly for me. Um, so, why Tyson doesn't need to fight him. After Tyson, who's going to want to fight him? They all said they want to fight him, but who's going to want to fight him? Maybe Joyce because he's got a... He's got a granite chin, but I, I, I'm not sure if Joyce gets one of them punches on his chin, he, he's not going to go down, you know. Oh, off Tyson? No, no, off, uh, off Wilder. Um, Wilder. He, he budges, he's budge bigger man than Joyce, hasn't he? Look what he did to that Brazil. Yeah, so so I don't think they're going to be queuing up to fight him. I do think Joyce stands a good chance against him, but it's not going to be something they're going to be rushing to, is it? When he hit that debate, the when he hit uh, that Brazil, it reminded me when Derry Matthews did Tommy Coyle, you know, like a gun going off. Did you ever see that? Said, yeah, I think I think we've said this before, mate. I think it'd be a good fight for Yui if there was something on the line. I think I, I think we've said this before. I think Peter could work out a game plan. I think he could execute something very similar to how Tyson fought him. But if it's not going to be for Mega Doe or a title, why would you want to put yourself in that position? Because I think if if Yui beat him and there wasn't anything on the line, he'd get a bit of credit, but then he he's going to become even more um, unpopular to fight. You know what I mean? So people aren't going to want they don't want to fight Yui now. So I, I don't I don't know who'd want to fight Wilder because he's too dangerous and there's got to be a lot of line for, to make it worth the while. So, but I do think Wild, if he came over here, because he's got enough, he's got enough of a fan base. If he came over here, he could fill fill out a big stadium because people want to see that knockout, don't they? So if so if they fought somebody like Wilder or Dubois or anybody, I think he could generate a lot of revenue. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I do. Uh, do you think that moving forward, Brick Top? And uh, Eddie Hills, the five and zero ice man from Billericke, three by way of, but no footage. Do you think that uh, they'll work together moving forward? Or do you think it's just going to be they're just going to say they're going to, but they're not going to? So. Yeah, I don't, I don't see why Ern. It's always been on Ern's terms because Ern is is the he's not got the history, but he's got the the financial backing. And uh, the the connections globally that that uh, Warren hasn't got, so it's always going to be on Ern's terms. I don't think unless it's on Ern's terms, they'll, they'll, they will work together. Unless the fighters are, are so adamant that they need to fight one of their fighters and vice versa, where they just tell them to shut up because we want to get on with it, and then they'll have no choice. But you know yourself, when promoters are in people's ear and they're saying, right, you know, you might be able to get a mill for this fight, but dodge that fight and I'll get you three mil over your next two fights. You know, the people people just get, you know, their heads turned, don't they? So I think that um, to answer your question, I don't see any change. I think it's going to be as you were, as you were for the next four or five years. Do you see it going any differently? No, no, I called it from the beginning. They've not done 10 fights in 12 years, have they? So that's not even... No. Fight a year, was it? They've done one fight every six months or something, or seven months. What is that? It averages out. I oh, know, no, it's no, sorry, it's less than that, isn't it? If they've done what have they done? Eight or nine fights in 12 years. It's not even one a year, is it? So it's one every six, 16 months or something. What is that? How bad's that? 
That's not good, is it? If they'd have done four fights a year for the last 12 years, we'd have had 48 fights. Just one every three months. That's all. We'd have 48 yeah. fights. So where's the other missing 40 fights? So that means that boxing fans are being shortchanged because the two top promoters can't stand each other. It runs too deep, doesn't it? And they're all trying to outdo each other outside of boxing to block everything. Imagine if they did that in Premier League, Richards, with football. We take to the streets. Yeah. We take to the streets like miners drive. This is how I see it, um, Russ. I think that probably Terry's probably done a, a bit of research on this with the financials and um and what? Sorry, one of the other guests, and I forget his name. That's my that's my bad. Um, the, the guy who, yeah, they they probably done the financials. But this this is how I look at it. Um, Eddie Hearn, whether you like him or not. He's a, he's a whale in the ocean. He, he's got the financial clout. He, he's just steaming on, and he drops he drops a few balls along the way. He makes a lot of things that make us cringe. Um, it, it, you know, whatever. But the fact remains is that he generates the big books. Yeah. Whether he buys fighters, what he, what the contracts he's got, or whatever, he's steaming along, and it's been ongoing. There'll be some bumps in the road. But that's what it's like for the UK and, and, and globally. In America, it's a different story, but he's he's going along full speed. Warren is is you know he's not a whale. It, it, as regards his legacy and and what he knows about the game, he is. But as regards his financial clout, he isn't. And I, and I, and he'll never get back to those days of ITV and Sky when he was he was the biggest promoter in boxing. I find it difficult for him to get there. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's got a good string of heavyweights and that'll help. But at any point in time, Earn, Earn can just turn their head, offer some money in a contract and off we'll go. So I can't see that I can't see that changing. And for me, I think that Eddie Earn thinks that the fighters that, you know, he's let go to Sky or he lost out on um, uh, to other promoters and other um, um, television companies... I don't think he's that bothered. It's wastage to him. That's how he sees it. Yeah. So I just think it'll, it'll just. I, that's how I view it, mate. And I think if you check, and he says it himself, and I've not bothered to do it. But if you go on company's house and you check out the figures oh. of the turnover, the profit of what they're making, I'm, I'm sure there'll be a massive, massive, massive difference. So I'm quite that's how I see it. I, I, don't, I don't like it, but that's how it is. You mean from Matchroom's accounts to Queensborough's? Yeah, match well, not not just Queensbridge, but Matchrooms, Queensbridge, Prebellum, Wasserman, um, everybody's yeah, Dickens's, Dennis's. Yeah, you compare them, mate. You know, they speak volumes. They really, really will. And that's just a matter of life. It's it's the guy with in this case, it's the guy with the biggest muscles wins, and he's got the biggest financial muscles. I'm afraid, yeah. in the UK anyway, in the UK. What do you see happening with cruiserweight division at the moment in uh, UK? Because uh, Dennis has got a slice of the cake at the moment. Anyway, he's IBO guy, Jack Massey. Yeah, um, I'm pleased to see that win, but that's, it really remind me, that's got to be six months ago now, hasn't it? Not kicked on, have they? Not kicked on. So I thought that he would have tried to make a cheeky offer when Canelo was sniffing around cruiserweight division. Uh, I thought that they might try and get him a bit of money and give, uh, you know, it would have been an easy easy win for Canelo, that. But that's what I thought would happen. It could have been an option for him. Maybe they explored that, maybe they didn't. Um, but, you know, I think what Dennis needs to do with Jack is he needs to defend his title a few times, try and build him, you know, fight some people that are credible, but he's got, got he's going to be favouriting and try and get him into a position where... Uh, some, somebody like Nicole is going to want to have all the belts included in the IBO when he gets a decent payday from it. Yeah, but who's this? This is how you got to look at it, right? He's got an IBO. Who's going to pay? Who's going to pay for defenders? Well, he's got to Dennis is going to dip in his pocket and find a, find a revenue stream for it. That's the job of the promoter. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be interesting, but maybe Jack Massey might want to fight some of them Sky lads. You don't know, do you? You never know. Um, you know, he's got to put food on the tizzy. What's he, is, is he full-time, Jack Massey, or has he got a job? He's full-time, and he's an IBO world champion. He's got to be full-time, hasn't he, now? 
Well, yeah, he were, but Max, I mean, Max Hughes has only just gone full time, hasn't he? And he just, he's after years awesome. and years, he did. He's on IBO, he's got an IBO, but he's a world champion. Isn't he? Yeah, he is now, he's yeah. Done well but, him, he? He's done well, him, hasn't he? Yeah, you know, I like Max. I, 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 I sort of don't know him, but I've, I've, I've met him a few times in the gym. He, he, back in when he was training down at Millennium, he was always a lovely lad. I liked him a lot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, then. Uh, we'll finish off on. Punditry. What do you think about Johnny Nelson's recent outbursts? Uh, in particular, what, mate? Saying that he does OSEC. Oh, that, no. Again, I think we touched on this last time. Yeah, <laughs> he doesn't, listen, mate, he, does, he doesn't lace up OSEC's boots. And again, I'm trying to say that with the best will in the world. I'm not trying to slate Johnny off. He did what he did. Anybody who wins championships, all due respect to them. But he is not in the same class. And I, I'd be, I, I'm surprised. And every fighter's got to believe in themselves. And that's what he'll say. I didn't believe I could. I wouldn't be worth, worth uh, nothing. But you've got to, you've got to face reality. He, he just, you know, he just, he just, he just won't stand the chance. He's not in the same league. And, and with all due respect to Johnny, it's, it's different, different gravy, isn't it? Put it this way, would Johnny Nelson be AJ? No. <laughs> would Johnny Nelson be Chisora? No. Well, that, there you go then. I know, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> we, like, we like Johnny now because we've realised now that Johnny's only joking because this madness he comes out with, it can't be, it can't be real, can it? Because it's utter... Madness. Yeah, I don't, again, I don't, I don't know him. I've, I've nodded to him a couple of times just for recognition. I've, I've, I've noticed who he is, and nobody else has noticed who he is in in, in bar in Sheffield. So he's, he's acknowledged the nod, and he always seems like a nice guy. Uh, I, I haven't heard a lot of bad things said about him, really, as regards his character. And I would never want to, you know, do somebody down who's who's achieved what he's achieved. But comparing him to Usyk is. That's crazy. Craziness, to use your term. Craziness. Right. No problem. Well, listen, I better get showered and uh, wait for them to ring me to go get this infection out. Okie dokie, and that is me done then. All being well off. That's that young man. Uh, I don't, well, I don't know if he's a young man. I've got your gloves. I'm going to stick them in boot, uh, David, and next time I'm on A1... And I'm bored. I'll just head to Cobras and I'll get them signed for you, okay? But don't mean to say everybody keeps sending me gloves. <laughs> I shouldn't have said out you that. Should do competitions and let them do it that way, shouldn't I? But I'll have to get some gloves and we'll do a competition. Hey, listen, let me show you this. This is our cheeky Dennis's. You see, I've come round. I've got a present for you. So I've got a signed glove from a world champion, Dennis. So this is, oh, what world champion is it? Anna Rankin. So what I might do, I might just scrub that off and use this glove as a competition. <laughs> I'm only joking. Thank you, Dennis, uh, for my Anna Rankin glove. It's what I've always wanted. I'm going to sell it on eBay and make millions. <laughs> Never look a gift horse in the mouth. And what, mate? Let's Never see. look a gift horse in the mouth. I'm not going away anyway. I'm an order like Dennis. He's an order. So thank you very much. I've got a, a signed glove from a world champion. I went, here, Reg, what do you reckon to that? He went, God, the writing's not very good. I said, it's a signature. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right, listen, what you got planned for today, young man? Uh, pool day today. So we're, we're yeah. just hanging around the pool. We've got a nice uh, restaurant book for dinner tonight. So, uh, what do you do with that? What's the in pool, Richard, and cool down? Yeah, it's. Um... We've got it all to ourselves, so it's just it's just like it's like like I say, it's like winning lottery for two weeks. We keep pinching ourselves. It's unbelievable here. Yeah. We went into Saint Tropez last night and uh, it was just surreal, you know, all all the all the fancy cars driving up and down, Ferraris, Bentleys and yeah. everything else and people tanned and having a good time and and uh, and watching them spend a lot of money while I was sipping half a lager for about four hours. And every one of them that's there is on universal credit. Claiming from England. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's what we're doing today. Just a, just a nice chill day around the pool, and we've got a nice restaurant booked for tonight. 
So looking forward to that. Okie dokie then. Right, well, listen, you take care. Have a great day. And when you're back? Uh, I'll be back early next week, mate. I'll give you give you a bell. Because I'm, I'm actually not... Uh, the week I get back, it doesn't look like I'm working till the week after, so I'll try and get a coffee or something, yeah? Okay. You take care, mate. God bless. Too, too hot for snooker and you're too good for me anyway, so none of that's <laughs> going on. Okay. All right, mate. Take care, mate. God bless. See you later, Paul. Bye-bye.